Passport Mommy with Michelle Gerson. Motherhood is both amazing and difficult at the same time. The Passport Mommy, Michelle Gerson, is here to share in your journey. It's amazing. It really is just watching them grow and see how much change and how much they learn just without the filters around them. Joining you on your greatest adventure, here's Michelle Gerson, the Passport Mommy. Welcome to the show. I hope you had a wonderful week. I hope you are staying sane and healthy. I don't know about you, but I'm loving this nicer weather and I still am enjoying having my kids home. However, it is getting more and more difficult to balance work and kids. So I don't know. I know some daycares are reopening. I know some people are having mother's helpers. So we're trying to figure that out. But I do have to tell you that something that has been on my mind for quite some time and has actually caused a lot of tension in the family because we weren't getting it done was what I consider the most important thing in your home, which is child proofing your house. So if you have little ones, like I have a three-year-old. So for the most part, we're kind of past the child proofing, although there's some drawers that I wish you know she wouldn't get into. But I also have a one-year-old and we also have a few sets of steps. And so it's very nerve wracking when you are trying to watch the kids. But then if for a split second, you turn your head, you're just having a gate, having child proofing in your house, I feel is the utmost important thing. And I am thrilled to have with me today, Jay Martell, because he is the child proof coach. And I am so happy to have found him because when I tell you that we were just dragging on and on with no time, no time, and this should be your time. And also, questions with, I don't know how to put this gate up with these types of steps that we have. So that kind of left us without doing something for a while. And he basically saved my sanity. So Jay, thank you so much for joining me today. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Thank you for for having me. Um, sure. I would just like uh, parents to know out there that I've been at this for uh, quite some time. And um and the case for using us or using a, any professional child proofer is to just get things done. Yes, exactly. And I have to say the amount of months that we have put this off for, and then after having you in, that's exactly how I felt. I felt, why didn't we just have you in sooner? Get it done, feel safe, feel secure. And on top of that, you do it in such a way that does minimal, I mean, there's minimal marks in your house. I know a lot of people are worried, oh, there's going to be holes from the gates, but you do it so minimally, so quickly. And you also were very educational for myself and my husband, just in going around the house and pointing out so many different things. Well, thank you. That's right. Uh, We don't hurt the house. We don't leave much of a footprint. Everything comes out amazing because we're used to working with these products. We are matchmakers. Uh, Everybody's house is different, uh, yet, you know, we put our heads together with our clients. And we probably don't charge enough money. I'm in an average house for a handful of hours, and it, like I said, it just gets done. Um, Parents and families, like you've experienced, wind up going through this odyssey of buying products, returning products. They show me handfuls of stuff they bought in in boxes in their houses or, you know, from from a big box store, and they say, Jay, why doesn't this work in my house? And, you know, that's where we come in again as matchmakers, and we try to match the appropriate products with the issues that are going on in the house, and, and you don't even want to childproof every square inch of the house. You need somebody to come in and do the things that are hard, um, you know, do the things that they're experienced in, and you want it to be really easy for you to get around your house and safe for the baby, and that's that. Um, I get the baby gates to work like a new car door. Uh, I move them from one house to another house when people move, and you'll never know that the baby gate was even there. And actually the funny um, funny thing about that is I have what we call holophobics. They don't want any holes in their house, like you already mentioned. They don't <laughs> want to hurt the house. So they, so they get a pressure gate, and they take a pressure gate, and they have to put in pressure on both sides of the wall. And instead of having a tiny, small, pre-drilled hole, probably into a stud or solid wood, they wind up with a large gaping hole. So you'd have to say they shot themselves in the foot. They didn't want any holes at all. And now they have a a huge hole that takes some wall repair. Right, exactly. And also with pressurized gates, you don't want those at the top of the stairs, right? 
Uh, that's right. That's, uh, you know, I have a list of common mistakes that people make and, um, and, you know, people order things from the internet. And like I said, they don't always put things that are appropriate. And that is one of the most common mistakes because a pressure gate at the top of the stairs, even if there are little wall cups that are screwed in which some of them, you know, come with the instructions to do, it's a narrow door and it's, it's a bar on the bottom to step or trip over at the top of the stairs. So sometimes you're making the top of the stairs more dangerous by putting an inappropriate gate there. When you're carrying a child, it creates a blind spot. And we've had people, you know, go tumbling down the stairs while holding a child. Um, yes, so exactly. that is definitely one of the most common mistakes. That we yeah. See. And we made that mistake when we first moved into this house where we're now we've had, we only had one gate and we put this pressurized gate at the top of the stairs and I hated that bottom bar and I didn't know better. We didn't keep it up for very long because my daughter didn't seem to need it, but yeah, terrible, <laughs> terrible mistake. So tell everybody just a little bit about your background, how you became a child proof coach and when you started your business. So it was out of necessity. Uh, I had two boys of my own, Max and Dean Martell, and we figured if we can solve our own problem, we can solve other people's problems. And that led to me finding the International Association for Child Safety, the mouthful, IAFCS.com. By the way, if you go to their site, you can just click on the Find a Child Proofer button right in your area, as long as you don't live you know, way out in the boonies. Um, right. And you can get someone to help you in your house. So through the, our association, of which I sit on the board, um, we created standards for installation and designations. And I'm actually an advanced certified professional child proofer. Um, I know to some people it sounds silly, but it doesn't sound silly when I go to people's houses. I'm all done. And all I ever hear is, we wish we would have called you sooner. That's the number one mm -hmm. feedback. And the number mm -hmm. two feedback is you saved my marriage. And, right. and sometimes I do save marriages. It becomes a bone of contention. Yeah, it really has. I mean, because I don't know about other people's situations, but you might have the wife saying, why can't you put this gate up already? And the husband saying, I can't figure out how to put it up. I don't know where the stud is. I don't know how to get this up. Mm -hmm. And the husband's like, why don't you That's do right. it? <laughs> Well, a dad, a well-meaning dad could spend, you know, um, a, a whole weekend doing it, make three trips to Home Depot, potentially make right. Swiss cheese out of the walls, trial and error, and, and we'll come in and put it up in 45 minutes to an hour. It works like a new car door. It comes out of its mount if you want to, you know, put it away for any reason. It slides back into its mount. So I do, you know, unfortunately people think, they should be able to do this thing themselves when it's really just like hiring any handy person, whether it's an electrician or a plumber. I mean, they're more than handy people, but they know what they're doing. They work with the products every day. They know the ins and outs. They know how to get it to work in your house. And it's pretty much the same case. And, and people's time is worth money. And if you think about it that way, it's so well worth it to have a, a coach like yes. me, the childproof coach. Exactly. And so what are some other common mistakes? We talked about the pressurized gate at the top of the steps. What are some other mistakes that parents tend to make? Great question. And I can't wait to get this out. All of our well-meaning, highly educated, uh, intelligent parents, <laughs> they seem to leave the, the, the crib, uh, the monitor, the monitor. Everybody wants the monitor next to the baby. And then we bring the baby home from the hospital. The baby's not moving. The crib mattress is nice and high up. And they kind of plant this monitor right on the crib or right next to the crib or, or mm -hmm. right where, you know, a child can reach. And, you know, kids' hands are working. They grab things. On all the monitor cords, there's just a giant orange sign that says the monitor cords should be kept at least 36 inches from the crib. And I have right. to tell you, over 50% of the houses I, I walk into, I take a peek in the bedroom, I look at a parent, I say, <gasps> oh, my gosh, there's something life-threatening in this room. And they go, oh, my gosh, what is it? And then I walk them over okay. to the, um, you know, the announcement in bright orange that they neglected to read now that their child is mobile and can grab all kinds of things into the crib. It's a good point. And there was one other thing that you had mentioned to me right away when you looked around my house when it came to the blinds. Yes, window cords. And window cords could sometimes be reached also from a crib. 
Um, and, you know, I'm not on this show to tell you, like, every seven minutes some this happens to a child. Um, you know, we just want to give people an overview, enlighten them, and, and make them more aware of things they look at every day that have inter- inherent dangers. There is a, a group called Parents for Window Blind Safety who totally advocates having cordless shades would be your, your best bet. Uh, having mm-hmm. looped cords are probably the next worst situation because children can get stuck in a loop. They're all headed for the windows. They want to see what's going on outside. And, if, and some of these chains look like a necklace. They're silver and have little beads. And if a child falls off of what they're on, you know, I'll, I'll leave it right at that. So right. you know, exactly. window cords should be up and out of reach using cord cleats or getting cordless blinds. And back to the crib for a second, you just have to make this mental moat in your head about around the crib to make sure a child can't bring anything into a crib. And you must lower that crib mattress also so that when your child pulls up, they don't come tumbling out of the crib. Coming up next, I want to talk with you about some solutions and some other tips that parents can learn from you today because, Jay, I'm so happy to have you with me today because you are the Child Proof Coach. You're located in Connecticut, and you did. You saved my sanity. You saved my marriage. You saved everything. So more coming up in a few with Jay Martell. Motherhood is a journey. Joining you on your greatest adventure, here's Michelle Jerson, the Passport Mommy. Thanks for listening to the Passport Mommy. I'm Michelle Jerson, and I'm here with Jay Martell. He is the Child Proof Coach. He has earned the designation of Advanced Certified Professional Child Proofer from the International Association for Child Safety, and we had him over our house a couple of weeks ago. And when I tell you the sigh of relief, that I let out after he left. I mean, what an amazing job he did to put up some gates and you know things that either we couldn't have thought of, we didn't think of, or we couldn't figure out how to put up ourselves. He made so simple and our lives are just so much more relaxed and calmer knowing that our kids are safe now. Jay, thank you so much for joining today. Hey, thanks for having me, Michelle. Sure. So we were talking before about common mistakes that some parents make when it comes to just having things around the house that are safety hazards. What are some solutions and tips that you can offer? Okay. I love this because childproofing your house is not all about buying things. Like I said, people have fistfuls of things when I walk through the door and they say, why doesn't this work in my house? Um, Here's some of my favorite free tips. Okay, a child can pinch their fingers in a door that opens and closes, can't they? And there's all kinds of foamy things you could buy at the store that, you know, stay or sometimes don't stay on your on your door. But you can just throw a towel over the door. That's free. That, and that'll keep the door – put two towels if, uh, if it's closing a little too tight. You could put a, a towel over the hinge side of the door, and it basically won't even move. So there's some free child mm. with just the towel. When you go over to your dishwasher, everybody's dishwasher seems to be just hanging in the open position. We don't want the babies to put away steak knives or touch the detergent. And then, of course, they put their fingers back in their mouths, and that could cause some burns. So keep that dishwasher click closed. Back to another kitchen appliance, your microwave and oven sometimes have a control lock feature. Look for that little button. See what it controls. See what it locks. Uh, You'll be a step ahead of the game. Uh, on top of the oven, we sometimes have the stove and the burners. Use those back burners. Why use the burners in the front if we could uh, put things that are hot, you know, farther away from where children are and turn those handles away from the front of the oven uh, when you are cooking? Just get rid of clutter. Get stuff out of the way. Uh, t- take those leaning mirrors, which I see everywhere. Either secure them or move them. There's pictures around that are leaning on the wall. There's an andiron set by the fireplace with firewood. Just put it somewhere else. Uh, Knickknacks and the dreaded older siblings' toys. As kids get older, it seems all the parts get smaller. And, yes. of course, they're choking hazards for that, for that crawling baby. I'm on yeah, a run. Those are Don't... small parts or choking hazards. And I will say that my son has also put markers in his mouth and bit the markers, eaten them. So yes, all of that. Yikes. I know. So, so it's about awareness. 
you know, um, it, it's always going to be about your supervision, and a child-proofer is just going to allow you to relax and enjoy your kids a little more. Sometimes we just gate the stairs and give them the run of the house, and sometimes we gate for containment, and we put all the dangerous things on the other side of the house. And with containment, we have eyes on, on kids um, most of, you know, all the time, actually, we need our eyes on them. Uh, back right. to three tips, though. I find a lot of slippery rugs and slippery floors. If you have a rug in your house and you're holding a baby and you're making a turn, you know, if the rug goes out from under you, so you want to put that uh, rubbery padding under the rugs, some hardwood mm-hmm. floors somehow have slippery spots, and you want to be ke- careful about that. Runners are great to have on stairs, and if you don't want to put runners on the entire wood stairs, there are little step runners that you can just put down. They, they stay in place. There tend to be wires everywhere. Everybody has tape in their house. Just, you know, do a little dusting and, uh, and uh, put some tape over those wires and, and just and tidy things up. Take a cord from a lamp. Put it behind the lamp. It doesn't have to be out in the open. All the cords on the kitchen counter, um, you know, make sure they're up on, on top of the counter. You don't have to plug in the monitor where a child can reach it. Plug that in, um, you know, above the counter in the kitchen if you're – keeping an eye on your baby during nap time. Right, exactly. Those are all excellent tips. And like you said, you don't need somebody to come in and tell you all of that. Well, maybe you do because a lot of people just aren't aware. <laughs> and it's it's the simple things like that that are extremely helpful. And so what are some other, just we have about two minutes left, any other tips or solutions before we get into how to install the stuff in our house? Because maybe we don't live in an area where we could bring somebody in like you. So how do we do it on our own? Or even if we just want to add a few things to say a drawer. So we'll talk about that next. But any other last minute solutions? Yeah, on the free tip side, still before we get into the installation aspect, um, hot beverages, you know, a lot of microwaves are down low also that, to create, to leave kitchen counter space. You're constantly taking the hot things from down low and lifting them up high. Be really careful. Be really careful when you're drinking a hot cup of coffee and you have a baby in your arms. I know when I would carry my son, all of a sudden they just, you know, they just arch their backs and just go and, and get stiff on you and, and, and do the, and do weird things. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. In your closet, sometimes in shoe boxes, there's those little uh, packets of, you know, I have stuff that's designed to keep your shoes from, from getting too moist. There's dry cleaning, uh, you know, the plastic from dry cleaning that is definitely, you know, right. you know a suffocation risk. And it's, it's a little dangerous. So, um, so let's do that. Yeah, those are all great tips. Jay Martell, he is the Child Proof Coach. He is located in Fairfield County, Connecticut. He will travel in Fairfield, anywhere in Fairfield County, maybe even a little bit outside Fairfield. I know we're outside Fairfield County, and he made the trip to us, and it's definitely, definitely worth it. I'm Michelle Jerson. We're coming up in a few. Passport Mommy with Michelle Jerson. Motherhood is a journey. Joining you on your greatest adventure, here's Michelle Jerson, the Passport Mommy. And I am here with Jay Martell. He is the Child Proof Coach. He is located in Fairfield County, Connecticut. He came to my home. He was amazing in everything that he helped us with and the gates that he put up and the safety that I now feel for my children. And I could actually take a deep breath and relax a little bit. But even if you don't live in Fairfield, Connecticut, there are other childproof coaches around the country. Jay, tell us a little bit about where somebody can find a childproof coach of their own. Yes, Michelle. Uh, Our association, the International Association for Child Safety, has a website. It's the IAFCS.com. And you could, there's a little map of the United States, and you can click on the state that you're in. Uh, it's the Find a Child Proofer map. And you can find a child proofer in your area who does the same things that I do. We meet on a monthly basis. Um, virtually, we uh, meet annual, biannually right now in conferences. And we take this very, very seriously and spend lots of time thinking about best practices, what we can do, what we shouldn't do. And as we know, a lot of it is just about awareness. When it comes to installation, we get it done in a hurry. Everything comes out really great because we're familiar with these Mm -hmm. products and what will work in everyone's house. 
Right, exactly. And you think of solutions that we, I mean, let me tell you, we were staring at our baby gate and our landing for so long and just thought this isn't fitting, this isn't working. And then you just installed it on a different part of the wall that just didn't even cross our mind. One, two, three, boom. <clears throat> right. I like those backside closers at the top of the stairs. The gate doesn't actually have to go straight across from wall to wall. If those walls come to an end, it could actually be installed from the backside and not even possibly be able to swing out over the stairs where it would be a little bit more dangerous. Right, exactly. So tell us a little bit about how to install the various products that we should have in our home. Okay, real installation. Um, it's, it's huge. And, you know, not everybody is going to use someone like me, so they are going to do it themselves. And I want to highlight a few things that save lives. There's a group called Megan's Hope run by a mom, Kim Amato, who unfortunately lost one of her twins. It's been a, a long time now. And, uh, and Kim just tries to promote safe securing of furniture to walls. So what mm -hmm. we're finding on furniture, and I don't want to name any names, but a lot of times you get a piece of furniture delivered to your house, and it must be secured properly to the wall because a child will pull out drawers and once a few drawers are out they might climb those drawers to get something that's on top of a piece and that is lethal and it's you know hospitals and you know the statistics are out there i'm not going to go through it all i want to do is 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 keep kids safe the kids of the parents that are listening to this and so they may spread the word a lot of times what's coming with this furniture is plastic. It is brittle. It is an afterthought. It's stapled to the back of the furniture. Again, I'm not going to mm -hmm. name names, but it right. is inadequate. Um, in our association, using best practices, we use what's called a pro furniture strap. There is no plastic involved. It goes into solid wood, and that's my next tip. Solid wood is called a stud. There are studs behind walls. There are also studs behind plaster walls. They must be found because some of these kits that leave a lot to be desired also come with hollow wall mounts, making us think that it's okay to put it in a hollow wall, and it's not because hollow wall plugs will just pull straight out. So stud finders are not expensive. Sometimes you can use a magnet to find the screw that is holding the sheetrock to the stud. So it's really important to screw into solid wood on the back of the dresser and then screw your appropriate furniture strap into a stud behind and below the dresser. Most dressers want two straps. You pull them tight and then you can sleep at night. Most of the issues that happen is when you think a child is sleeping or napping or they're, you know, too quiet in their room and, um, you know, so I just want to, I can't stress the importance and we're talking bookshelves. And if, when you have high bookshelves or any bookshelves, sometimes it's also okay to use a, a metal furniture bracket. It's really just a right mm -hmm. angle. And again, one hole goes into a stud, the other hole goes into a top. I apologize if this is a little boring, but I hope it's clear. And uh, you really need to do that properly. Yeah, And absolutely. of course, now the number said... one yeah. uh, issue when it comes to installation is getting a properly mounted gate at the top of your stairs. This gate needs right. to be up. It can't be a pressure gate with a bar on the bottom. It needs to be up, and it needs to open like a door, so there's nothing to step over or trip over. But, of course, most people find that there aren't two flat surfaces of wood facing each other. We call that the childproofer's dream because the childproofer can just put it right up, boom, boom. Usually there's a banister. Sometimes there's sheetrock. Sometimes there's molding. Sometimes there's brick. So it's all about getting a piece of wood up because that's what the gates want. They want flat wood that's plumb, so that the plumb meaning straight up and down. We are able to put in almost every wood mount with two tiny little pre-drilled holes that when the gate eventually comes off and the wood comes off, those holes are the equivalent of hanging a picture, and that's how we leave no footprint. But it's really important to get those mounts up. Some mounts you'll find uh, can go up against the post and uh, be wrapped around the post, making no holes. We have no hole wood post kits. We have no hole spindle kits. I apologize if it's boring, but to me it's just so exciting because once we get <laughs> the proper surface up, I get these gates to work again like a new car door. And, and people look at me and like, it's like, wow. But, you know, we do customizing. So, I don't make custom gates, which a lot of people ask me about. I customize, you know, properly 
um, built gates that have been right. condoned by the JPMA, the Juvenile Products Manufacturers Association, and meet the ASTM standards, and that's the American Society for Testing and Materials. Uh, any custom-made gate is generally super heavy. Whoever made it meant well, but it sags on the wall. That It's installed with lag bolts, and the afterthought latch that someone found in an aisle of Home Depot doesn't line up, and the gate came be latched. So I'm replacing $500,000 gates with a, you know, a much less expensive gate, less than $100, and, and it works incredibly well. Um, Michelle, save me. Am I getting too technical? No, not at all. I think this is very, very informative. And I think that that's a good point about just customizing a gate that's already been proven. And I think that can give people also peace of mind because they might feel too that they do want to buy that gate that does have that certification that they know has passed the test and that you're just coming in and you're helping put up that gate, which is great. Yes, yes. Um, Okay, so... So moving on from gates, I I have to hit on this one subject. There are so many child safety products that come with sticky tape, okay? And the first thing I say is, well, I don't want the safety of your child to depend on sticky tape, right? And, And people will stick stuff on one side and stick it on the other side and hope to keep the refrigerator closed or stick it across the front of their cabinets and and ruin the front of the cabinets when that tape has to come off or stick things on the fireplace, which creates a terrible residue, which is hard to get off. And Mm -hmm. my my tip for installation on all these things that stick to things is you must clean the surface. Some of these things work okay, but you can't stick anything onto dust. You can't stick anything onto dirt. You can't stick anything onto grease or oil. So it's all about rubbing alcohol, which has been hard to get lately, but I think rubbing alcohol (laughs) has, has resurfaced. Uh, so if, when you have that sticky latch in your hands and you want to put one side on one thing and one side on the other thing, just get a paper towel, clean it with a little rubbing alcohol in both places that it wants to stick and get it right where you want it and just go wash it in there for a while until, uh, you know that you have a really nice, nice hold on that. Okay. And if you choose not to go the sticky route because you want to make sure that it's secure, how easy is it to put in the other type of hardware? Right. We love cabinet latches that you don't see from the front of your cabinets. They go on the inside, whether it's a magnetic latch where you need a magnet key to open the cabinet or whether it's a standard push down latch where you open the cabinet slightly and then you push something down. Everything's on the inside. So everybody's kitchen stays as beautiful as it was the day that it was built. If you open any right. cabinet door or drawer, you'll see lots of holes on the inside already, whether it's for hinges or magnets. So it's just a couple of little dots on the inside, keeping those little fingers from getting in there and, and grabbing things that should be out of reach. Right, exactly. And even for my three-year-old, like I said, we don't necessarily need the baby proofing as much for her anymore. But even it's been so nice to have the latches on the pantry now. So now I know when she's going in, when she's not, when she's going to grab something and when she's not. Yeah, right, right. And I use various different types of latches. So I do Mm -hmm. have latches that deactivate because places like the garbage can or the everyday silverware drawer sometimes you don't want to press the latch the whole time sometimes the baby's not in the area so we have latches that could deactivate and magnetic latches have a deactivation aspect too i'm not crazy about it because i don't want anybody to forget but i really want people to be happy and i can't tell you how happy the families are that i visit once i've been there and, and done childproofing yeah Exactly. No, I've enjoyed being able to switch it back and forth because you're right. There are times that I go to just open the pantry quickly and I'm like, ah, but then I could just twist it and it's perfectly fine. So I like the versatility. Um, I think that's great. So we have a few more minutes. Are there any other things that we should think about installing when it comes to child proofing the house? Oh, let's see, Michelle. I don't know. Cue me. What else did we do at your house that was, that was super helpful? Um, so we did, my notes. Um, 
Yeah, I think we hit on the basics. You know, we did the gates. What's one thing you did when you talked about sectioning off part of the house, which is great. Downstairs in the basement, you were you put a wide gate to section off that room. So now I know that they are contained in that area. And if I have to run upstairs for a second, I know that my son isn't going to start crawling up the stairs. And this saved us from having to put a gate on the top and bottom of those stairs too, which was terrific. And also it just to, it also prevented him from going into other rooms within the basement. So I right, really like that's that. Right. Well, let's talk about the basement really quick because lots of basements have playrooms. And down right. in the playroom, there are doors that lead to the sump pump. There are doors that lead to the electrical closet and the, and the oil burner. And we certainly don't want kids to play hide and seek down there. It is often right. appropriate to latch doors. And if you have a kind of a basement that goes in a lot of different directions, instead of doing that baby gate at the bottom of the basement stairs, you could do a wider gate or a gate in a threshold that leads to the area where the kids are spending most of their time. That way you could diversify your basement. You could have your, your weights and your, you know, spinning machine in one area, and you can right. have, you know, the child safety um you know, play area in in the other area. So yes, we do wide gates. I can make them. I've done 18, 20 foot gates, and believe it or not, nothing gets screwed into the floor. There's a door mm-hmm. within the gate that's easy to operate, and all these gates remove from their mounts and the wall super fast and easy, so you can get them out of the way. So if our parents are having a cocktail party. Um, the baby <laughs> gates are gone. Well, the mounts exactly. may remain, but they're pretty nondescript, so everybody's happy. Yes, absolutely. And with the two minutes we have left in the segment, is there anything that we should be doing in our bathroom, like in the bathtub? Uh, that's a good question. And here we go again. Everybody's house is different. Um, I, and they, you know, the toilets are different. The bathtubs are different. The spouts are different. There are spout covers. There are potty lid locks. Um, there are window limiters. A lot of times in the bathroom, which is actually really a subject we didn't hit on yet, but kids are attracted to the windows and we want a non-evasive way to keep them from opening the windows. So there are window limiters, especially in the bathroom when you want to crack the window to get the moisture out, but you don't want the window to go up past a certain point. So we have devices that don't make any holes and uh, that way you don't have to do a big metal jail type window guard. In some cases, Mm -hmm. You know, parents want that. And a lot of what I do has to do with a parent's comfort zone. And, you know, if mom and dad can't sleep at night, you know, and they need window metal window guards screwed in, although they have to be quick release for fire, Mm -hmm. um, you know, they can certainly get that. But uh, back in the bathtub, I think it's in the bathtub. it's It's a place where there's total supervision. A lot of times you're in there taking a bath, you're with the baby, you bring them in, you take them out, you dry them off, you're out of there, and you close the door. Right, right. Okay, well, that that's the best job proving right there. Just stay with your baby, never leave them alone in the bath. We're speaking with Jay Martell. He is the Child Proof Coach. And we're going to talk about next segment, Jay, when is enough enough, right? Like, when do we need to baby-proof until what age? You're listening to The Passport Mommy. I'm Michelle Gerson. More coming up in a few. Motherhood is a journey. Joining you on your greatest adventure, here's Michelle Gerson, the Passport Mommy. Welcome back to the show. I'm Michelle Gerson with Jay Martell. He is the Child Proof Coach, and he goes by the saying, it's what to expect when you're protecting, which I love because you do need to think about that. That is so important with everything else you think about as new parents, how to protect your home is the, what I consider the most important thing to ensure the safety of your child or children. Jay, thank you so much. You have given us so many great tips and advice so far in the show. And I'm just curious, when do you think enough is enough when it comes to child proofing? When can you say, okay, I can relax a little bit. Maybe I don't need this item. Maybe I don't need that item. (laughs) <laughs> That's a great question, Michelle. Uh, well, relax a little bit. When can you relax? Well, I don't know. <laughs> but but where do you draw the line? And, you know, you can't childproof every square inch of your house, which is sometimes why we break down the house and we do a containment plan and we make those areas 
as safe as possible, especially when we have um, when we have twins or, or triplets. I mean, they really need to have their own little little magic kingdom. Um, right. I'm a bit of a minimalist. I will actually talk people out of things if they don't seem appropriate uh, for the age or if it's going, you know, a little bit overboard because we could always come back and add it. A lot of times a child will tell you what they need or don't need. But, of course, we need gates on stairs. Of course, we need furniture attached appropriately. We need chemicals locked up and put away. You know, we, we definitely do the guts. But do we need to latch every single cabinet in the kitchen? Hmm. We do want to latch where the where the um, chemicals are. We'd like to latch the cookies right. in our blades. We'd like to latch where the cheese graters are. Can you move these things? Yeah. Most people are set in their ways, however. And, um, and you know, they, you know, you want to have control of where the dangerous items are. Um, some people say with a wave of their hand, Jay, latch all my cabinets and all my kitchens and all my bathrooms. And, you know, who am I to say no? I just tell them, all right, I'll get my knee pads on and uh, we'll, we'll get this done. But oftentimes we're just uh, latching in cabinets what is most dangerous and I can always come back and do more because even though the Tupperware is not dangerous after a while parents get tired of just cleaning everything up anymore and just kids just right. pulling stuff out of drawers and again so that depends on you know the child themselves and and the parents the parents comfort zone you know how many gates do you need people say oh, I got six stairs in my house well oh, my gosh top and bottom I might need 12 gates. And I say, well, you know, I'll come over. We'll put our heads together. We'll figure out where the kids are spending time. We don't even have to do this stairway over here because we just put up a gate in the threshold that leads to the back stair. So now a child right. can't get out the side door, can't get out the garage door, and can't go up the back stair all with one gate. Plus that gate has the baby now where you could have eyes on them at all times. So, you know, under the heading, where do we draw the line? We want to get the most out of the least. We want to do as little as we have to, but get as much done as we can. I often get the question, you know, when can we get rid of this thing? You know, even though the gates look so great and, you know, they want to call the, <laughs> the local Better Homes and Gardens for a photo shoot. They say, when can we get rid of it? And I jokingly say, you know, maybe when, maybe when your child goes to college, Parents want control for as long as they can have it. They worry that their kid might be sleepwalking. I don't know. Things could happen beyond their control. So, so you know, everybody has a different comfort zone. You, you probably do have to take gates down if you have a child that's going to climb over the gates because that's creating a safety issue. But if it just makes right. everybody feel good at night that you can still close the gate, even though they're beyond the recommended ages for gates, you know, I'm not going to tell parents how long they can keep them. Yeah, no, that's an excellent point. And like you said, every family is different. And it is just so important to get those gates up, get the child proofing done when your kids are little and then play it by ear. And, and you'll know, you'll know as parents. I know that from my three-year-old. But like you said, there's different challenges now that she's sleeping in the bed at night. You want to make sure that if she comes out of her room, she's not going to fall down the stairs. So Jay, thank you so much for being here with me today. I mean, such, such helpful tips for anybody listening. And they can find you at childproofcoach.com. And mm -hmm. you're in Fairfield County, Connecticut. You travel throughout Connecticut. But again, tell everyone where they can go if they want to find a childproof expert in their area. Uh, we all belong to the International Association for Child Safety. And that's the IAFCS.com. And at our website, you can click on Find a Childproofer. Just click on your state, and it'll have a list of childproofers. You call them, talk to them. You know, our heart is in this thing. Jay Martell, thank you again for joining me today. I'm Michelle Jerson, the Passport Mommy. Enjoy the rest of your day.